Next we will do a few more proofs because at this point in a geometry course a lot of students need some extra help with proofs. So what we will do is look at a few proofs and in each case I'm going to discuss the basic approach, a plan of attack basically. And then I will go through the particular steps and explain why I do each step and why I do them in the order that I do them. So let's look at the first example here. In this case we're given, let's look at our given information here, we're given EF is greater than DF, so let's find that. EF is greater than DF and we're told to prove that angle 1 is greater than angle 4. Okay, let's think about this. EF is greater than DF. Remember the theorem that says that if the sides of a triangle are unequal, then the angles opposite those sides are also unequal. And the larger angle will be opposite the, the larger side. So if, if EF, and note that angle 3 there is the angle directly opposite that side, if EF is greater than DF, and note that angle 4 over here is directly opposite that side, EF is greater than DF, so angle 3 must be bigger than angle 4. So let's circle that one. Angle 3 is bigger than angle 4 over here. And then look at angles 2 and 3. Those are vertical angles, so they have to be equal. So if angle 3 is bigger than angle 4, angle 2 since it's equal to angle 3, must also be bigger than angle 4. Now I'm trying to prove that angle 1 is bigger than angle 4, and look at this. Angle 1 is an exterior angle for this triangle. And exterior angles are always bigger than either remote interior angle, so angle 1 has to be bigger than angle 2. And if angle 1 is bigger than angle 2, and angle 2 is bigger than angle 4, then angle 1 must be bigger than angle 4. Now that's my reasoning, and I'll spell this out in, uh, in a series of steps. Now if you're not sure where to start in a proof, a good place to start is always with the given information. And we're only given one thing here, other than the diagram, we're only given one thing. EF is greater than DF, so let's write that. Step one, I'll just say that EF is greater than DF. And then over here, the reason, the reason I know that's true is because that is given. Okay, EF is greater than DF. And on the diagram, remember, remember EF is down here, and DF is down there. Now a good thing to put next, a good thing to put for step two, is something that logically follows from step one. And if I know that this side is bigger than this, then I know that the angle opposite this side, that's angle three right there, must be bigger than the angle opposite this side, that's angle four right there. So angle three must be bigger than angle four there, that follows from this first step, so I'll put it next. Angle 3 is bigger than angle 4. And I have to have this step before this one. Because this first step is logically prior to that second one. So the reason here why is angle 3 bigger than angle 4 is because the bigger angle, bigger angle is opposite the bigger side. And instead of the word bigger, you could say larger or longer. That would be fine. But the larger angle is opposite the larger side. So I know that angle 3 is larger than angle 4. Okay, next step. We said that angles 2 and 3 have to be equal because they're vertical angles. So let's write that. Angle 2 equals angle 3. And the reason is they're vertical angles. Vertical angles are equal. Okay, now, step four, look at what I have here. If angle two is equal to angle three, and angle three is greater than angle four, look at this, I can take this statement here and just substitute angle two in right there for that, because angle two is equal to angle three. So I'll substitute that in, 
and that gives me that angle 2 is greater than angle 4. And the reason I can do that is substitution. Okay, then, then I said that angle 1 over here, this angle, is an exterior angle of this triangle. So it has to be bigger than angle 2. That was my next step. Angle 1 is greater than angle 2. And that's the exterior angle theorem. I'm going to abbreviate this. Exterior angle theorem says that an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than either remote interior angle. So angle 1 has to be bigger than angle 2. Now I'm trying to prove that angle 1 is bigger than angle 4. And look what I have. Angle 1 is bigger than angle 2, and angle 2 is bigger than angle 4. So my last step, I can simply say angle 1 is bigger than angle 4. And that's the transitive property. And you could say the transitive property of inequality, but this is sufficient just to write the transitive property. If 1 is bigger than 2 and 2 is bigger than 4, then angle 1 must be bigger than angle 4. And there you have it. That's what we were trying to prove.